In court, the judges slowed their breathing, swallowed, bowed their heads and put their hands to their mouths as they viewed the footage. All of it caught on film. It was a long fight for it to be allowed as evidence. Eventually, it was. Three quarters of the world's new and emerging infectious diseases come from animals, mainly from trading in wildlife or from factory farming. And it's my fault. I'm responsible. I've got a job to do. I've got a family to feed. I'm the consumer paying them to do my dirty work. As the animals are driven off the trucks, the workers must see them as pieces of meat to be killed as quickly and efficiently as possible. Pigs rank number four in animal intelligence behind chimpanzees, dolphins and elephants. I remember being born. I do. Hi, so we're back, and uh, I have some very fun guests in uh, in studio today, and uh, I'd like to welcome, um, you know, uh, some actresses, uh, Wendy Morgan Hello. Um, and uh, Maria Austin. Hello. Uh, and you guys are here from the UK, or? We are, yeah. That's right. And so, so tell us about this. Uh, you have a screening coming up. Tell us about the project. The project is called Mercy. Uh, it's a feature film, one hour, 22 minutes long. It tells the life and death of a factory farmed pig and all the animals are played by humans. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a project, a passion project of mine that I've been working on. Conception was 2011. We shot in 2016. I couldn't get an editor, so I had to learn how to edit. So I edited for two and a bit years. And finally, we did the festival circuit, which brought us to Awareness Festival. I'm now here to LA for a screening at the Arvo Cafe on the 19th of November. Sure. So give us a little bit of background on, on both of you guys. Like, what were you doing before this film? Um, well, I've been an actor for 45 years now. So I've been working in film, TV, theater, Never made my own movie, but uh, this was the first time I produced and directed sure. and wrote. Um, before we shot, so we shot in 2016, 2017. Um, so I was a pretty fresh faced thing out of drama school at that point. Um, and Wendy gave me my first feature film uh, role, and uh, it was a great privilege to, to play Mercy. Um, and from there we've worked together um, a few times since, haven't yeah. we? Um, <laughs> we're playing, we play mother and daughter yeah. actually, actually in another film that's out next year. Um, so since, um, since then I've been working as well in theatre and film mostly. And how did you guys get interested in the subject matter? I mean, where, when did that start and how did that start? In 2011, um, Animal Aid, organization did an investigation into nine abattoirs in the UK and nine uh, eight out of the nine were found to be abusing the animals and one was near to where I lived yeah. so I went and stood there with some people like vigils I guess you'd call them although they weren't called anything back then mm -hmm. and just found out about the industry as a whole and uh, yeah went vegan because of those findings oh really oh. yeah yeah and um so, I mean, the concept behind this, you know, having the story told through the eyes of the pig, um, tell us how that comes about. I mean, it's an odd idea. <laughs> well, one of the pigs that I met, inverted commas, in the truck as they would pull in, we named this pig Mercy, and you see him in the film, and that's shot back in 212, probably, so I had that footage. and. I guess I wondered, I mean, it just really haunted me, really, the, 
the lives of these animals. And I just drew one and imagined this, what their life would be like, or I heard what their life would be like, and wanted to try and see without anthropomorphizing. I can't remember the name of the word. I know what I mean. I can't say it. And mm -hmm. can you say it? Anthropomorphizing? Something like okay, that. Yeah. Without doing that, without kind of putting... <laughs> we get the idea. Right, without yeah. putting our human concept into an animal's <clears throat> head is to... That's how it began, anyway. That I, I started writing and writing and writing. And so what do, you, what do you guys think was the most challenging part of getting this movie made and finished? And, other than having to learn how to edit. Right. <laughs> Money. Finding finance. That's not what I ever done I've been the actor going into projects that are already made not having to produce and trying to find money to fund a project so that was probably the biggest thing but you managed to do that somehow yeah with the love of a lot of people that drew towards the project because of it yeah it's been really interesting over the last few years seeing that it's as when you said like a lot of people have been drawn to it and it's just sort of snowballed with this momentum and kind of drawn more and more um, people to it and there are a few charities in the UK that have been really um, involved right from the conception right? Yeah, yeah, Animal Aid, mm -hmm. Compassion and Wild Farming, Aviva, Animal Equality and we've just now got Peter who would like to help push it out there as well. Sure, you know a, a lot of our audience are you know independent filmmakers, a mm -hmm. lot of them are you know very uh, um, they have causes um, that they're very passionate about and one of their biggest challenges same as yours is how do you raise money so what would you say would be the most effective thing you did that kind of got the money machine rolling well I never really got it that much rolling although I did get <laughs> it it was just open my heart to people just talk about it I didn't have any expectations so I'm surprised we're even here mm -hmm. So uh, there was that. Just open up and talk to people, really. And, yeah. and you're so passionate about the subject matter as well. Like I have to say, when we shot, I didn't really know anything much about the subject matter. But when you're so passionate and such a, um, like it's, con it's very easy to connect as a sort of spokesperson for that um, subject matter. And I think as well, there was a crowdfunder going for a little while, wasn't yeah, there? There was a well? couple. But, you, but you're talking and connecting with people on it, I think, has really engaged people, whether it's from a kind of financing donation point of view and, and bringing money in, or from just the whole team that have gathered around it. And right. Maybe there are no rules, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it's like in the big, the big movie <laughs> area, but maybe there are no rules, whatever works for you. Sure. So now the movie's finished, somehow. We've got Although they say you never finish a movie, you abandoned it, right? And so... <laughs> What you're hitting the festival circuit? We, what's, what's happening now with it? We finished. Oh, well, our last festival was at Awareness Film Festival in in the US here, and um, but we couldn't make it out here because the, uh, the ban was still mm -hmm. in, so we couldn't get there. We, we tried. So now it's on the at the American film market in the American film market, and we have this one screening here. So we're just trying to get distribution and see how we can get it get mm -hmm. it available. And what are your hopes for the movie? What do, you, what do you hope it does? Continue the conversation that's already begun in its own little way about mm -hmm. these issues that it, that it deals with. Okay, you two guys have accents, so we can tell you're not necessarily <laughs> from New York. Yeah. Um, you, you're here um, during Brit Week. Coincidence or just planned? Completely coincidence, but great great fortune. To and did you partake in any of the Brit Week activities? Yeah, we went, uh, yes, was it yesterday? Sunday? Sure it was. Sunday. <laughs> Had a bit of a whirlwind week, I think, haven't mm -hmm. we? Uh, yeah, we went to um, one of the Brit Week events where they had um, the car rally. So they had, uh, it was about um, uh, creativity, I think, between the US and the UK. Um, and um, they had lots of different cars that they were exhibiting in a James Bond Wonderful vintage. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was yeah. really cool to see those. Extraordinary. Did you guys have any idea that this goes on in the U.S. every year? Mm -hmm. The only thing we missed one year, we missed last year, but with COVID. Mm. But um, as long as I remember, we've always had a Brit Week here. It's oh. wonderful. I've heard of it, but I didn't mm. really understand what that was. Yeah. 
Well, this, this is great. So other than this film, what are you working on? What am I working on? Getting my next job. <laughs> I have a few in the thing. I've, there are a couple of projects bubbling up, but I mean, whether they'll come to anything or not, I don't know. But I'm still writing now. I've started sort of a one-woman show and another, hopefully a series called Water Swimming. Oh, wow. <laughs> and how about you? Um, so I've just done a uh, proof of concept for a feature that's set in the 1850s um, and it's been written and directed um, by another brilliant actress, Priyanka Burford, and it's about um, Mary Shelley. I don't know if you guys know Mary I Shelley. I know Mary Shelley. Wrote Frankenstein and um, it's right at the end of her life and there's a little cohort of four really interesting people. I play Ada Lovelace, who um, was the first computer scientist, and these people are brought together, um, and it's a bit punky, mm -hmm. a bit funny, a bit dark. So we've just shot um, the proof of concept, and they're trying to raise financing to do the feature. Sure, and what kind of budget? Uh, I believe sort of one to two million pounds. I don't know what that is in dollars. Lots of dollars. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you still, uh, you know, a little bit of advice. There's now we've got approved in the U.S. Um, the ability to do equity crowdfunding, mm. so that for any film that's under five, you could actually go out to fans. So in your case, you could go out to fans of Frankenstein and, and Shelley and stuff like that, and have them actually invest in the film. Mm -hmm. um, through automated platforms and so one is called film capital oh, cool. um, and stuff so as long as it's under five million us which makes it three million um two and a half three million um uh, you can you can raise that money that way and stuff it's a pretty efficient way it's, it's brand new it's just been um introduced to help independent filmmakers figure out how to get their things financed that sounds brilliant. Yeah, so yeah, you, you should check that out. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for being here and good luck with this film. And I'm actually going to be at the, uh, the screening. You so. are fantastic. I am, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank you for having us here. Yeah. Well, thank you guys thank for coming. Thank you. Good luck to everyone. All righty. Bye-bye. So if somebody's interested in um, this film and the subject matter, where, how do they find out more? Uh, there's, a, there's a website, mercyfilm.info. We're on all of the socials, Mercy Film, Instagram, okay. yeah, Twitter, Great. and Facebook. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm sure you'll be getting a lot of people asking a lot of questions. Oh, okay. I hope so. <laughs> that would be great. I'd love to answer. In court, the judges slowed their breathing, swallowed, bowed their heads and put their hands to their mouths as they viewed the footage. All of it caught on film. It was a long fight for it to be allowed as evidence. Eventually, it was. Three quarters of the world's new and emerging infectious diseases come from animals, mainly from trading in wildlife or from factory farming. And it's my fault. I'm responsible. I've got a job to do. I've got a family to feed. I'm the consumer paying them to do my dirty work. We got a as the animals are driven off the trucks, the workers must see them as pieces of meat to be killed as quickly and efficiently as possible. Pigs rank number four in animal intelligence behind chimpanzees, dolphins and elephants. I remember being born. I do.